Welcome back. Well, today we have a Bedford Antiques video for you. Um, and we're doing this with my usual format. Part of it is film I took while I was shopping. And part of it is just going to be talking about the items I have here um, in front of you. So, when we come back. Okay, well, before you ask, the photobomb kitty is here, but he is snoozing. Uh, I just went across the street to haul him off the neighbor's porch. It was the neighbors over that way, as opposed to the neighbors over this way. Um, he was over there teasing their dog last time. The people off across this way don't have a dog, so I think he was just teasing the homeowners. He is naughty, but I love him. So anyway, my baby is sleeping somewhere now because teasing the neighbors is hard work. All right, Bedford, let's start right in. This was, in fact, the first piece I grabbed on that trip. This is a very sweet little powder uh, jar. It has the powder puff, which may or may not be original. When I sell it, I will just include that puff. It's in very nice condition. Art Deco. Um, see the little feet, the lines coming across, little top, powder blue, which is one of the jazz colors. Nice condition. Um, jazz colors. Let me just throw that out. There were colors that were just wildly popular in the 20s and 30s. And this, this powder blue, sometimes it's called Alice Blue, is one of them, was a hot Art Deco color. And we're going to talk about some of those colors in a bit as we get a little further along. But yeah, Art Deco, um, this one, and um, mint green, um, you know what was not hot in the in the deco era? Red. Red was not a jazz color. This one, this was. All right, let's take a look at the bill of that in the store. Well, I have seen a really pretty art deco powder dish. Um, it's seven dollars. Ordinarily, I would say that is a little high priced. But Art Deco sells. So we're going to snatch this one up. But in the meantime, we're going to take a trip around the corner. And I'm going to show you one that I'm not taking. Okay, here we go. Same booth. And we've got this one with a pretty ruby glass top for $10. This one, which is part of a set, but it's priced separately, $8 for the tray, $10 for uh, the, this is, I'm guessing this is a pin box instead of a powder box. Beautiful green celluloid. Um, in some parts of the country, the price would easily be justified but I'm going to stick with the little deco piece, which I know I can turn for a profit. All right, now I have yet another um, film about this piece because as I moved further into the store, I found another piece. Um, again, same thing, it's like a powder box or a pin box whatever, a vanity box, let's just say, generically, that was more along the Art Nouveau lines. I don't want to say it was Art Nouveau because I looked at that piece and mm, 
no, I wouldn't say it was what I would consider to be uh, a prototypical example of Art Nouveau. Just definitely not Art Deco, more along the Nouveau lines. Um, whereas this one just has this nice sleek ribbing across here and these delicate but simple feet. The other one had little flowers carved into the feet and um, well, you take a look. Okay, take a look. Well, I just came across another vanity jar. Remember, this is the one I am taking, and this is the one I just came across. Uh, mine was $7. This one is 10 So, why is one worth it to me, the other is not? Look at this one, much more decorative. Look at all that gold and and oh, how nice and pretty, and we've got our decorations. Remember what I said about Art Deco. Art Deco sells. A piece like this, which is more elaborate, um, given the fact that it probably dates from the same period, I'm going to say it is likely, um, more likely than not, Art Nouveau, although when you're looking at a design like this, they're basically just copying whatever floral designs come to mind without any genuine effort to duplicate an Art Nouveau design. But obviously, deco, not deco. This one comes, that one stays, and it goes back to what I said before about Art Deco cells. As you can see, um, the, the simplicity of deco just stands out. But I did want you to see those. Now, all of those, there were like three other powder boxes there. All of them were nice. It's not as if there was anything wrong with them. The deco piece is worth more, though. Um, it will sell. It will sell faster. It will sell for more money. So that's what you want to look for. If you can find deco, grab it. Because, and I think I said this like four times in that video, deco sells. It really does. Um, it will sell quickly and for more money. Um, I think the biggest part of that is artistically, art deco was probably superior to the other movements around it. Um, it was a higher art period. The, the other pieces, Art Nouveau had a tendency to be sort of slapdash together. Anything with a swirl or a curve or a flower or whatever was Art Nouveau. Uh, art Deco was more of a pure art style. My opinion. Uh, here next piece up this this is just a little piece i got that will go on to a tidbit tray um and let's take a look at that well here is a relatively recent chinese piece now let's turn it so you can see the mark um made in china relatively recent it's three dollars now three dollars is a high price for this especially look at how small it is but as you know because you've been listening to me i'm sure i will um pay a little extra for cute little pieces to add to a tidbit tray and i think this is a cute little piece that's probably going to make the difference between a tray that sells quickly and a tray that does not so, for $3, yes, it's coming with me. Well, as I explained, it was high-priced, I think, for a little piece like this. $3 seems high. But, for my purposes, it's worth it. Because one of the things I've noticed is that tidbit trays with interesting toppers sell more quickly than ones that don't have interesting little toppers. So... Will that piece sell quickly? I think so. I think it will appeal as long as I am able to combine this with some interesting pieces 
um, pieces that complement it. Yes, it will. So while I have this, let me show you something that it, I do not have the film of when I grabbed this, but it, I do have this sort of making a cameo appearance in another segment. Um, and a total of four of these nice blue and white English china. Um, what is this? This is, um, oh, I'm going to assume this is some sort of uh, somebody's version of a pastoral English scene. Um, it looks a tiny touch oriental to me, but what can I say? Definitely English. It's marked. I got four of these. These are going to make two half moon tidbit trays. Um, those do relatively nicely when I when I can put together a tidbit tray out of uh, bone plates in that half moon style, they sell. And I think people like them. And of course, having having English china, something that is not quite as Japanese as many of my tidbit trays are, is going to allow me to offer something that's a little different and might appeal to different buyers. So I grabbed those. They were not very expensive. I don't recall what they were, but I think they were um, three or four dollars a plate. So it was, it was a good price. Um, let's take a peek at these next. Now, when you see them they uh, in the film, you are going to see how dirty grubby they were. So let's take a quick look at that first before I explain about these. This set of salt and pepper shakers, if you will recall, the last time I was at Bedford, I stopped at a booth, got several large stovetop salt and pepper sets. And I looked at that, but there was an issue about the pricing, so it stayed behind. The pricing issue has been resolved. So here we are. That's coming home. Same dealer, by the way. Look at that little piece. Japan, $6. This, $10. It's a sugar and creamer set. Nice little, um, I'm going to say little Dutch people. Uh, here we are in South Central Pennsylvania. you got to know that's probably what it is. Um, sugar and creamers like this on the stand side by side were very popular from the 1930s through about the 1950s. Here, let's take a look at this guy. Is this incredible? This is a little two-piece rooster. Our rooster was $7. You've seen those plates here. Um, Two dollars, and I'm going to assume they are toothpick holders, but they are some sort of set of something. Very small, very cute. And then let's take a quick look over here at our little milk can salt and peppers. I... Okay, the price issue I was referring to is um, one of these was marked $15 and the other was marked $13. So I think it was like $14.95 and $12.95. Um, and then each tag said salt and pepper. So um, I brought it up and said, well, what does this mean? What is the price? Is it per piece? And um, they ended up giving it to me for $12.95 which was good. Um, this, you may be thinking this is Art Deco, but those of you who paid attention to the video I did about the difference between Art Deco and Art Modern are going to very quickly see Art Modern. Whenever you see a piece like this that looks like the Chrysler building, it's Art Modern. Um, the easy shorthand to remember telling the difference between Art Modern and Art Deco. It's Art Deco 
was French. Art Modern was American. And typical American overkill. Uh, someone once described Art Modern as Art Deco on steroids. Very apt. When we did Art Deco, we did it with a vengeance. We went into overdrive. So Art Modern, oh yeah, this is just amazing. And these are not going to go up for sale. These are mine. They're going to sit on my stovetop. And as I was saying before about the jazz colors, red was not a jazz color. However, orange was. And orange, as you can see, we've got cream, black, green, and orange. Those are the colors in this. And black, green, and cream, as you can see, are the colors of Ezra, my stove right behind me. And orange was the accent color that was used in the 1930s when they put green in a kitchen. If a kitchen in the 1930s had any significant amount of green in it, it also had orange in it. That was just the way they did it. And keep in mind that we are very eclectic in our tastes today. When we look back 80, 100 years ago, uh, or even more recently, the 50s and 60s, they were like super matchy. Everything had to match. You know, your purse matched your shoes. We grew up with that when we were children. I'm sure you can remember your mother saying, you cannot wear that purse with that shoes. They don't match. You cannot wear the, those gloves with that hat. They don't match. So they were just match crazy. And some color combinations were just really important for them. And green and orange was one of them. That was the kitchen combination they liked. Just like back in the 70s when they combined avocado and their sort of, what was it they were calling it? Um, uh, it was a burnt orange color. It was sort of, it was uh, basically, it was green and orange still, but it was avocado and I think they were calling it um, copper tone or um, harvest gold, something like that. So these are staying. Um, and I have in fact been looking for a nice set like this. And of course I have wanted Art Modern. Um, so the upside for the people who have been watching the, uh, the stovetop shakers that I have been picking up lately is the other ones, including this little set sitting on my stove right now, are eventually going to end up in my Etsy shop because these are the ones that are going to end up on my stove. So, done with that. The other items you saw in that film clip included this lovely little cream and sugar set and I'm holding the creamer by the way even though it has a lid it is a covered creamer and we have a very nice floral design on the back um, it's Japanese um, very very sweet but our, uh, our people here I am going to say they are Dutch people uh, that is just the thing around here. Pennsylvania Dutch everything. So here's the creamer, or the sugar, I'm sorry. Again, with the lid and very nicely painted on both sides. And the little tray. And this is that's how the tray looks. And the pieces just sat here on the tray and went together like this. Now, that was very, very common. I think that started around 1920 with this particular configuration, side by side on a little square tray, and the sugar and creamer were often rectangular in shape, and that went right through to the 1950s. That is an interesting set, by the way, because of 
the covered creamer. You just didn't see that very often. And covered creamers, boy, that is hand. Um, so let's take with that. Um, these, which are very nice Japanese salt and pepper. Again, that stove top size, as you can see. Um, very large. Let me just grab a... Here. This is a reasonably decent sized salt shaker. And you can see the size difference between them. Stove top pieces. Very nice. Um, for some reason, they tend to be very often this sort of uh, cream brown beige color range. I'm not sure why. That one sort of eludes me. Um, these, which I believe are toothpick holders, I'm not sure. It could actually be an individual creamer sugar barrel, a creamer with a toothpick holder, who knows. It's a very cute little set. And um, I, there's no marking on this. So I got this set because I really like the colors and the drippy glaze. Um, very, very nice little pieces. And here, let me haul this little bugger up. This is the Rooster's set of salt and pepper that you saw. Roosters and chickens are very desirable kitchen creatures. A lot of people collect roosters and chickens. A lot of people have rooster and chicken themed kitchens. Uh, so when I find especially interesting the salt and peppers in that, uh, in that general shape, I usually grab them. So what else did we have? We had, yes, the milk cans. Again, Japanese pieces, um, you know, large corks. Very nice. They're well executed, these. So, and do we have a, well, one of these, I'm not sure which one, has a little paper Japanese tag on it, which is how we know it's Japanese. Um, and let's see, what else did we have? Um, and so one place. Right. So let's move ahead to um, what do we have? Ah, here we go. This was the next piece. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tape residue on this. This is a very nice little German lusterware piece and the lusterware need to be careful the lusterware is very delicately colored sort of a soft champagne um let's take a look at the film on that first well a very pretty little reticulated plate with lusterware uh glaze along the edge caught my eye two dollars there are other plates, um, and this one, as you can see, is German. We probably didn't need to actually see German to tell that it was German. That sort of creamy champagne lusterware is typical of German and Bavarian pieces. For $2, that will become part of a tidbit tray. These three plates for $5 will not. Condition is just not good enough. But while we are here, look at that. Very nice piece of Czech lusterware. And very, um, it's not a very common style. Beautiful deco lines. Style's not common. But this interesting mottled yellow, you do see that in, in Czech and Bavarian lusterware. At $4, of course, it's going to come. Well, wait, he's got a friend. Let's take a look at his little friend, who is also $4. We've got some very pretty little spoons here. 
four for six dollars, the rooster pattern. They come with us. Um, the rooster pattern is very collectible. So let's take a look at this. Ten dollars is a little too much. Okay, so I later grabbed this, and I don't have film on this. I just walked through a booth and saw it there. This is nothing special. This is a piece of Fire King, uh, what is often called lusterware, not lusterware. The Fire King pieces are glass, so it's iridescent glass. It's made completely differently. This lusterware finish is a glaze on the porcelain. This is iridescent glass. However, when I saw this, I thought they are going to look terrific as a tidbit tray. So I grabbed them. Uh, but also, as I was picking up that piece, I found this beautiful set of Czech vases. They're, these are lovely. Czech pieces very often combine uh, yellow or peach lusterware with black, strong black, or brown trims. Uh, it was a common color, uh, sort of color combination, the light, the dark. And this, of course, you can see, is very um, Art Deco lines, very European. Um, I like these. It's a nice little pair of vases. So that was one I grabbed. That was a no-brainer, too. The vases were inexpensive. They're beautiful. And I like Czech lusterware. That's The stuff is just very nicely made. Um, but it's usually pretty easy to identify because the colors tend to be a little on the mottled side. They, it's, they, they just have a sort of, um, I don't know, as if somebody sponge painted them. Um, and after a while, you can usually tell the difference between the European lusterware pieces and the Japanese pieces. You can usually spot them from pretty far off. Uh, I know this one, as soon as I saw it, now I wouldn't have been able to say it's German, it's Bavarian, it's Czech because I find the European pieces are, uh, they're just, they're very similar, especially when you consider that uh, the, um, Germany, Bavaria, which is basically part of, Germany, Bavaria, Czechoslovakia, well, they're the Czech Republic now, I'm sorry, boy, I gave away my age. Um, yes, Back when I was in school studying geography, it was Czechoslovakia. It really was. Essentially, that is a part of Europe that was fought over for many centuries. And it's very close together. So, um, no, I can't really tell the difference just on site. I'm not sure the differences between Czech Bavarian and German lusterware are that obvious to anyone, to be honest with you. But can I tell the difference between that lusterware and Japan? Yes, usually at a glance. So um, let's take a look at uh, the, oh, the spoons, the little rooster spoons. Yes. These are Chinese rice spoons or Chinese soup spoons and got a set of four for six dollars. Very good deal because the rooster pattern sells very well. Now a lot of people consider this to be a type of rose medallion, the rooster pattern. Uh, I, I do not to be honest with you but hey I'm probably in the minority. The fact is that the rooster pieces are popular. There are people who collect it specifically. Those are nice little spoons. 
I will have no difficulty getting rid of them, especially since it's a set of four. And then the next items, let's take a look at this. This is uh, what's commonly called dragonware. Japanese porcelain with applied uh, dragon design. And this is the little teapot. So let's take a look at this. Well, as I said uh, regarding a previous purchase, I will pay a little extra for cute little items to stick on top of my tidbit trays. And this is one. Um, it's beautiful. It's got the wonderful little applique dragon. It's got a little uh, cup and saucer here. It's $6 for the pair, so $3 for each of what will soon be tidbit tray toppers. But is it worth it? Oh, yes, because someone is going to take a fancy to this. No two ways around that. This is just very, very popular. I grabbed this and the little cup and saucer as tidbit toppers. And although I don't have anything off the top of my head that I can combine with it right now, I will probably look around for something because that, that will be collectible. Somebody is going to want it. It's going to go into my little stash. And as soon as I find something, I will grab. The next thing I want you to take a look at is just a little quickie. I, I saw some plates that I want you to be aware of because this is one of those what not to buy. Well, I just came across a couple of plates that you might find interesting. These plates were based on Russian fairy tales and they came out, I think, in the 1980s by one of those, you know, Bradford Mint kind of companies that put out collector plates and they rather insist that their plates are collectible from the moment they issue them. Well, no. Unfortunately, you really can't even give these plates away today. People were paying, I believe the issue price was in the range of $20, $25. Uh, no. You'd be lucky if you get half that. And even then, people are going to want them in perfect condition, still in the original box, etc. So avoid things like Danbury Mint, Bradford Exchange, those so-called collectible companies. Um, really, you're never going to get your money back. Okay, as you can see, that film clip was one of the what not to buy pieces. So when you see collector plates from uh, the Danbury Mint Bradford Exchange, uh, they had all kinds of different names. They were put out onto the market. Um, and believe me, the price you paid for those plates when they were new is probably the high point in their little plate career because they did not hold their value. Um, whenever you see something advertised as, oh, and this is collectible and you're going to just get your money back and it's going to appreciate in value. No, no. Most of the time it's not. So please do not be taken in by that. And before you buy any sort of collector plate, do your homework. Make sure you know what it's worth before you buy it. Or, frankly, you could end up losing money. Well, let's take a quick look at the final piece I want to show you, what well, pieces I want to show you. And that is this piece and its lovely little friend. And these are just beautiful pieces of lusterware. Um, these are English. Well, one is marked. Uh, this one is not. But obviously, you can see these are from the same 
uh, company. So English pieces, we talked about this and we discussed the fact that lusterware was developed as uh, a poor man's sterling silver. And I think with pieces like this, you can see that. So let's take a look. Well, here is another little goodie. In fact, I've got two of them that we have discussed before. This is lusterware. Obviously, you can see from pieces like this how it is that they originally intended lusterware glaze to duplicate the look of sterling silver. This is amazing. You can absolutely see your reflection in this. Here we go. There's my camera. Gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. We've got two of them. Um, different designs. Eight dollars a piece. You had better believe they're coming home with me because this is a fabulous price for these pieces and someone is going to want these. Actually, I want them, but I don't have enough pretty boxes. All right, so that essentially is our um, foray into Bedford this time out. So I have yet another Bedford video uh, waiting for you. And of course, the Let's Curl Our Hair with Spoolies video coming up. So next time, another Bedford video. All right, we'll see you then.